This is our forage blog for February 2nd, 2012. And like we do most days, we want to buy the strong currencies versus the weak and sell the weakest versus the strong. We statistically compare each currency to every other one using multiple different tools, which we then average together to show the real-time strength or weakness. And we do the same thing on the weekly, monthly, and uh, daily, weekly, monthly trend underneath here. Three different statistical trend tools average together, together to give a very clean uh, and easy to understand reading. So the dollar is showing a lot of strength today. However, the daily, weekly, monthly trend is quite down. The yen also is showing strength. Usually the dollar and yen tend to move in the same direction, but it's not quite as weak uh, on the weekly trend is actually up and the monthly trend is less weak. So between the two, you would prefer to buy the yen today. Now the euro is extremely weak. Uh, on all time frames. So some of the highest odds trades are selling uh, the euro yen until about 9 when it starts to do a counter trend move. So you bring up the euro yen chart, you can see that for one, the price is underneath the hourly moving average, which is one of our filters. That's a very high odds for the currency to fall, and it does. And 3 o'clock right here is when it happened. When it breaks down out of this really narrow range pattern right here, Anytime you see a narrow range pattern on a four hour chart, it shows up with the yellow lines being the high and low of the previous four hours. If you had gone short right here, you lost a little bit, five, six, seven pips. You short again right here at 120, and you can see it fell about 40 pips. And if you miss that first move down, there's usually a, a continuation trade, you know, a little bit of a pullback right back up to the monthly pivot. And when you short right here, you can see it came down to the lower containment bands kind of ran out of steam, but that was good for another 20 pips right there. A lot of people use range charts to find more optimal entries. Let's scroll this back and take a look. One way of using a range chart is after getting a three to five bar pullback, in this case we had one bar, two bars, three bars, it's a three bar pullback. You wouldn't count one or two bars uh, as a pullback. I prefer four or five, but in this case three bars up one bar that closes red, and you wait for it to go one pip below that bar's low, which would be right here. And you put your stop a pip or two above the high. So in this case, you're risking six pips plus one or two pips padding, and you also have your fib target off of this. Uh, and sometimes the fib targets don't actually get hit. You can see this 99.81 is the profit target level. It came down here and it started losing uh, strength or weakness in this case. You see that? Extreme weakness, weakness, and then even less. So typically what I do is I start moving my stop down above the bar's high, and I would have been out of this trade here at uh, 94, short at, at 10, uh, for a nice 16 pip profit. And a lot of times uh, the Elliott two-wave fib system uh, is a good place to look for shorts. You draw your fibs on the first pullback, and somewhere between the first and second fib target, in this case you got one, two, three, four bars up, one red bar, you're short here at 08, it comes down and starts going sideways. Uh, and typically, notice the statistical weakness isn't even nearly as much as it is before. It's about half as weak. So you're out of this trade somewhere around um, 98 for about a 10 pip profit. You also have an Elliott two wave pullback on this. Notice it comes right back up to the hourly. And it's either going to stall here, the weekly pivot, or the hourly, and it does. And you can also look to go short when it breaks. Anytime it hits a resistance area and you've got three to five bars of up, down, up, down, uh, it usually signifies selling. As soon as it goes below the lows, you go short. And you can see in this case the market came down again with considerable weakness. You might want to put your stop right above the high here uh, at 07. You're short at 24. Uh, you made about 15 pips on that trade. And notice as it's pulling back up here, it has less strength than weakness. And then it goes down again uh, with a lot of weakness, up again with even less strength than before. This is another excellent example of a three-bar pullback. One red bar right here, you go short, and you can see in this case it falls uh, 10, 20, 30, 35 pips. You know, some trades you take are going to be small wins. Some of them are going to be break-evens. Some of them five or six pip losses, and some of them your full initial uh, stop and your initial risk, which is usually 10 or 12 pips. But the majority of your losses are going to be less than your initial risk, so you should average about a 5 to 8 pip per loss. Some of your wins are going to be very small, 2 to 3 pips, 5 pips, uh, and sometimes you're going to get 30 to 50 pip 
uh, trades. Today was a relatively, uh, you know, counter trend day, which is harder to trade. Another one that was weak was the Swiss, and so you could have um, also sold uh, the Swiss yen. This isn't a currency that we tend to, to keep up, but you can see that especially once it starts making a lower low, you look to sell counter trend moves. Uh, you know, this one only pulled back about 14 pips. Uh, if you shorted here, you had a loss. Shorted here, 10 pips. Uh, and any time you get a multi-low, it gets hit. Usually three times it gets hit. The fourth time it's going to bust through there. You have your Fibonacci profit target off of the previous wave. That's an excellent place to get out of the trade. In this case, only about 16 to 18 pips. Uh, but, you know, small win here, small loss, and small win, small win, and in this case, maybe a 20 pip win. You never know what your um, how many pips you're going to make, um, but typically one of maybe three to five trades should be a nice 20 to 50 pip win. Another extremely strong currency is in New Zealand, also the Australian. Uh, you could have also sold uh, the Euro Australian today. Notice, um, you know, made a lower low. You go short right here. Falls about 20 pips. You short right here, you have a loss. Short again right here, and you got 10, 20, 30 pips. Here's the Euro of New Zealand. Uh, it makes a lower low here. You go short right here, you have a loss. Uh, it pulls back up to the high and can't break it. You might go short right here when it pulls back and has a little sideways range. You go uh, short at 57, uh, 78. And most of the time, the Fib target is an excellent place to get out of this. So let's say you get out here at uh, 42. You're short at 78. You got about a 35 pip win there.